Today, I am delighted to be joined by someone who is top of the ICC bowling rankings in both ODI and T20I cricket. An England international, a World Cup finalist and World Cup leading wicket taker, a proud Evertonian and currently knocking over wickets at the uh, SDG Fairbank tournament in Dubai. Uh, I should, of course, tell you that you can watch the Fairbreak Invitational live and exclusive on Free Sports in the UK, which is, of course, free to air. Uh, a very warm welcome, Sophie. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Well, well, I'm absolutely delighted. Now, I think it's fair to say, from what I've seen, that the uh, Fairbreak tournament's going pretty well for you at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's obviously a great tournament. I think I was coming in not expecting what we were going to do and what, what team I was going to be in, really. And to be in a team with so many people from different countries, it's been a, a great experience for me. Yeah, and you're uh, a joint leading wicket taker, am I right? Plus, if, as I remember seeing, an absolute bullet throw to run out Mignon Dupree the other day. Um, so yeah, it should be good for your good. form. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. It's good to get a few opportunities and obviously batting as well, batting a bit higher and getting an opportunity to bat and... Yeah, born at the top, obviously born at the best place at the top of the order. And yeah, having a bit of a difference, born at different people. Fantastic. Well, um, have you had much experience in the past playing in Dubai? Are the pitches helpful to a, a so left armour? Are you finding? Is it good for you? <laughs> uh, I played here last year for the uh, IPL Invitational. So I think that was a, a good experience. I think playing in Dubai, I think we played at Char Sharjah. Our games are there, so... Yeah, they were quite slow, so uh, I think they do like help me out a bit. Yeah, well, that is that, that is the reputation that they have, a little bit on the slow and low side. Um, there are some fantastic players there. Who are you particularly enjoying playing with, or and then indeed mm. against? <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying playing with Ayabong Kata actually from South Africa. She's oh, a great good. character. I think she's um, obviously a great bowler as well, and she's very. Well, she's funny up there with you. You're 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 vying for that. Leading, leading, leading wicket taking spot, aren't you? The two of you. Oh, oh, yeah. No, I didn't know that, but yeah, she's great. She's doing well for us in this tournament, and obviously to play with the likes of Nick Carey from Australia. She's our captain, so yeah, just to play alongside different people and yeah, experience what they experience in a game. And uh, players you're coming up against. I mean, I mean, we know there's some incredible players there. There's Sophia, obviously, with you. You've got Heather and Deandra Dottin over on playing over on the Barmy Army. Um, I mean, the names go on. You've got Johanna Arana for the Falcons, Stephanie Taylor, Sophie Devine, of course, playing for the, for the Tornadoes. I mean, it is a, it's a bit of a galaxy of women's cricket stars. Who um, who's, who has impressed you that you've played against? And perhaps someone who you know we might not know, so you haven't played against so much. Who's maybe surprised you or impressed you that you haven't played against so often? Oh, against or oh, well, I'm playing with Sarah Bryce at the minute, and she's from Scotland, so mm -hmm. I'm not really playing with Brycey much, but she's obviously the keeper for our team, and uh, yeah, she's doing really well. And it's really nice to play alongside her and another keeper on our team is called Yasmin, and she's from Hong Kong, who lives in London now. So I think that's quite cool that she's playing for us. And then there's a girl called Dave, and she's from Singapore, who's on in my team, and it's just crazy to see who we're playing like who, who, like we're playing with people like that and. People from Singapore, I think, learn about their, their culture and them learning about our culture. It's just so different, but so nice to get to know them. Well, I'll ask them about a Singapore cricket club because that's a fantastic place to visit. I've never played there, but it is a fantastic... I have friends who have, but it is a fantastic place to visit. Um, from what I've seen, it's been a, a very high quality of tournament, hard fought, but there seems to be quite a sense of fun. You know, I, 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 the clips I see often <laughs> seem to be players really having a good time. Would you would you say it's kind of a is there a kind of a sense of communal communal sense of what's the word I'm looking for? Um, togetherness, common purpose that makes it kind of more fun to play in a tournament like this. Yeah, I think obviously we're in the same hotel, we're all in uh, Dubai together, in the same hotel, and I think we're getting to know each other and getting to know each teams and everyone hands round together. So yeah, it's great to get to know different people and. It, it's, 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 yeah, everyone's get on, gets on so well and to have a bit of fun on the field and make history really for this tournament is obviously great. Well, that's, that's, that's good to hear. Um, how did you come to, to, to be involved? I mean, the, 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 the kind of the mission between of Fairbreak uh, as, a, as, a, as an operation, it's, it's really about promoting women across 
all in all forms of endeavor uh, equality and uh, uh, performance and opportunity all of the, all of the, it's it's a terrific kind of concept how 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 did you come to be involved in it where did it kind of start for you i think it was just getting an invitation i think i'll a few of the girls um yeah got a few, an invitation too from the england girls and one of the girls sponsored by one of the people who owns the company well who's quite got a big part in this company and a big part in the fair break invitational tournament so I think it came about from that and I think we were so excited to come here and be part of it and be part of a tournament just makes history so yeah to come here and play with people that you wouldn't really necessarily play with or get to meet it's obviously amazing. But are you, are, and as you're doing that are you sort of aware of I'm not sure if the bigger picture is the right word but you know when, when you look at that aspiration create opportunities across sport health business media arts and education to empower women and to pursue success in their chosen endeavor um that's that's quite a rallying cry i would have, have thought do you, do you get a sense of the mission that you're that, that you're on there yeah i definitely think something like this is obviously massive for the associate com- like countries obviously div who plays for singapore and my team i think her going back to singapore and being part of this and playing with international players i think that's absolutely massive and gives them someone to look up to us in their country to look up to her and say i want to do that and mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's amazing. We've got a girl from, we've got Zoo who's from Japan and like for her to come over and play in here and it just gives uh, Japan cricket a massive lift to put money into women's sport and women's cricket. Well, that's, uh, if I may, may I just sort of ask a couple of, well, a question really about yourself and your own career. Who was the, really the biggest influence uh, on your career to date? And we'll talk about it was definitely my brother. And stuff. Yeah, it was definitely my brother. He taught me everything I'd I know really taught me James taught me how to play football, taught me how to play cricket, taught me how to play all sports. So yeah, it's definitely down to him why I'm here really and doing what I do. Is he a is he a toffee too? <laughs> yeah, he's a bigger toffee than me. Is he? He's definitely somehow, some way, yeah, he's he, he travels home in the way and watches every Saturday. So yeah, he's massive. Is he gonna be there tonight? Should I look for him? <laughs> <laughs> you never no, know. I don't think he will be there tonight, but yeah, no, he does travel home in a way, but yeah, I just hope that Everton get the win for us whilst I'm away. Well, I, I don't think Watford are going to stand in your way, let me tell you. Um, can I, uh, if I may, sort of take you back to the World Cup in New Zealand? It was a really tough start in that tournament. But then suddenly things clicked, didn't they? I mean, what suddenly changed or what suddenly clicked when, when things, after three defeats, you then went on a fantastic run? What, what, what was the shift? What, what do you think caused that, that change? I think it was just that we get we obviously needed to win every game. I think every game for us then was a knockout knockout game. I think it was a final. So I think it really shows how close we have as a group. I think it's all down to the girls to why we made top final. Everyone worked so hard for each other, and yeah, the girls do it for each other. So I think we're quite lucky to have a squad that works hard for themselves and not just and for the team too. Well, it was a magnificent tournament for you. Uh, again, I think you were the leading wicket taker, weren't you? pretty sure yeah you yeah but by, by a street as i remember not just by a small pit but by about <laughs> but six wickets more than the uh, the next nearest person um were you aware of the sort of the incredible support and interest that it started to gather back home in the uk is you know people like me were sort of under duvets either listening to it or watching youtube on, on their phone and then of course the final itself was, was all on free to air um that I was aware. I was aware that there was a, a real kind of growth of interest and excitement as the tournament went on. Did you kind of get a sense of that, even though you were so far away? Yeah, I think we did. I think when so my partner's parents, they don't really like they don't really watch cricket that much, and I think for them to be messaging Craig, being like, "So on the TV again," like the like the girls were on the news, the girls were on this, the girls were on that. I think it was big to know that they were on the big news and like just like big headline news that we were going through to final and the semi-final I think yeah I think back home it was getting bigger and bigger when we were starting to win and get through to the semi-finals so yeah it was great to hear all the support we had back home and it was very much appreciated. Well there was that kind of a defining game I suppose with the one wicket win against New Zealand wasn't it at Eden Park I mean I think there was a lot of nails bitten <laughs> bit in that night from uh, from people in the UK as they as they kind of supported you through that I can tell you yeah um, no bad game so, so I'm, 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 probably a tough question I suspect absolutely one you've been asked 100 times probably so I apologize if I'm asking it again um 
what do you think it takes to overcome Australia, who 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 kind of are so dark? I can see by the way you're laughing. You think, oh, what this one again? <laughs> Have you got the answer written down somewhere? This is what I'll just tell yeah, you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but because at times it seemed, although I mean, actually, at the beginning of the tournament, the end of the tournament, the, the, if you look at them on paper, the the the, the, the margin possibly was be bigger than you, than you and your team would have wanted. Um, but in many ways, the margin wasn't that great. You know, you take out that one incredible innings in the final and, you know, get that wicket early and it might have been such a different picture. But what do you what do you think it is about Australia that makes them so strong? And what does England need to do to get the best of them next time around? I think a lot of people say that there's like a big gap between Australia and England on paper, but I think... If you look back at the World Cup games, our first game was against them and we lost by 10 runs and it was a 312 place 300 game. And I think that was such a close game and it gets it gets forgotten about really. And obviously the final, I think it was obviously Australia won that game. But again, like, Alyssa batted really well, but then so did Nat. And I think if we had someone that stuck in with Nat, I think we would have been a lot closer than everyone thought. And I thought it was a lot closer than everyone thought. So, yeah, I think they're obviously a great team, but we're also a great team too. So... I think it's just on the day. I think if ever, if someone turns up, so if someone has a big day out, that really helps. Obviously, Healy had a big day out on that final, and that obviously got them the win, really. So, yeah, it's just on the day, really. I think we're 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 so capable of beating the Aussies, and I just think we are. Uh, well, well, that that is great to hear. <laughs> um, when's the next opportunity going to be to do that? I can't can't recall what's on the what's on the. In the pipeline. Well, the Commonwealth is coming up, and then I think it's the World Cup, World T Twenty next year in South Africa. Ah, well, there you go. That's two fantastic opportunities. But uh, very immediately for you, very immediately, I think um, you're playing in about an hour or so, aren't you? And aren't you on the spirit up against the, the tornadoes? Yeah, we're playing tonight at eight pm. Obviously, it's like what times like five pm UK time, so oh. in about four or five hours we'll be. We're playing, so yeah, we are playing against them. I don't think they have any Aussies in that team. Uh, no, I don't think they do, as I no. kind of went through them. Uh, so you're feeling confident? I mean, the spirit are top, aren't they, at the moment, your team? <laughs> yeah, we're doing really well. I think coming to the tournament, we didn't have, we thought we didn't have the best team on paper, but I think everyone's performing so well. And I think we've got such a balanced team that our associate players and our international players have really integrated really well, which is really nice. And we all get on so well as a team and we understand each other. So... I think we're quite lucky and yeah, I think we deserve to be top at the minute. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to any young woman who is starting to take an interest in cricket? What from, from your wisdom and experience so far and, and got to the point where you are ICC world number one in two formats. Um, somebody asks you, what should I do? What, what, what's, the, what's the one thing you would tell them? I think a massive one for me when I was growing up was to just enjoy it. I think I was the only girl at my cricket club when I went and there's so many more girls playing cricket now, especially at my cricket club. I used to be the only girl and now there's a massive girl set up and there's a women's team at my club now. So I think it's go along with your friends, go along with your mates and just go and give it a go. I think a massive thing, I think massive thing that I just do now is still just keep enjoying my cricket. I think and everyone's at the best where enjoying what they do and if they enjoy what they do and they love it, then that's the best way to be. And yeah, I just enjoy my cricket and I do and I do all right, hopefully. Uh, you're doing more than all right at the moment. I think you're being very <laughs> pretty, pretty, mo pretty modest on that front. I can tell you. Um, and of course, I mean that is the the kind of one of the missions behind the the the, the uh, fair break invitational. It is to get people motivated. It, it puts cricket at the heart of that of that, of that bigger mission, and, and, and it must be exciting to be be a part of that and have have a great time while you're doing it. Um, okay, so uh, my final question then for you. Um, <laughs> we mentioned it. Your team are playing Watford tonight. My team. We're sunk. Big win for you. You win. And you're, uh, I reckon you're safe. And that dreaded, the fear of the first ever de 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 relegation of Everton goes away, I would think, near enough. Oh, well, there. <laughs> you see, I I'm not stressed because no, I'm, I'm, not I'm already doomed. <laughs> So I don't have to be stressed, do I? It's all fine for me. Um, Sophie Eccleston, it has been an absolute delight to uh, meet you. Good luck for uh, today uh, against the 
tornadoes. I shall be watching that one closely whilst on my way to Vicarage Road for the inevitable pummeling that your <laughs> lads are going to give us. Uh, a final message, of course, is that you can watch the Fairbreak Invitational live and exclusive on free sports in the UK, which, of course, is free to air. Uh, Sophie Eccleston, good luck for today and thank you very, very much indeed. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And have a good time at the game tonight. I hope not too much of a good time, though.